everybody. I'm just going to get right into it. We've been talking about this nodal shift since I would say the beginning of January, which it happened in um, tropical astrology earlier this year. However, if we're going by Vedic astrology, the nodes just shifted into the same signs, Taurus and Scorpio. So now everybody's kind of at the same pace, regardless of if you go by tropical or Vedic astrology, there's no right or wrong. I just like to take both into account. We are now officially both feet in to the Taurus North Node and the Scorpio South Node. So I have a few articles about this already. You guys have seen me been talking about it and it really is a big deal because it's something that not only affects everybody collectively, but is such a long transit. It's not generational too much in the sense that you know, um, people born within the same 15, 10 years or so have the same Pluto placement or the same Uranus placement or the same Neptune placement. It's not quite like that. It is a little bit shorter of a window. It's about a year and a half, but it's something that absolutely creates a pivotal moment, not only in our personal lives, but in culture, collectively in the news. It's something that can become very prominent and obvious. So the reason that I specifically am talking about fixed signs today is because when we have something happening in any of the signs, it's always going to, by default, affect an aspect of the signs around it. So when we think of squares, it's planets and signs that are 90 degrees apart from each other. If we think of oppositions, it's 180 degrees apart from each other, meaning that no matter where anything is in the sky, it's always going to be affecting everything else. It never just means one thing. It plays its own archetype in the bigger you know storyline but it's always going to be bumping off of the energy and interacting with everything surrounding it whether we're looking at this in the sky in the transit chart or your natal chart or looking into the future you know whatever it may be um but this is something that's going to affect everybody but more so the fixed sign so it's going to be affecting taurus leo scorpio and aquarius the most and if you have any of those as your rising signs this is going to be very prominent for you so when we look at the houses in astrology there the houses one through 12 on that little wheel that i always refer to there's something called cadent houses and that is the first the fourth the seventh and the tenth house and these houses are called cadent houses because they basically are the backbone like the spine of everybody's personal life it's the four really big pillars like when you think of you know different sections of your life or different areas of your life it's usually always going to be self identity home and family relationships and commitments and your public life or your career your reputation so to have one of those as your rising signs at whether you know regardless of if it's taurus leo scorpio or aquarius by default the nodes are going to be opposite and square your major houses your major cadent houses meaning it's going to be affecting who you are as a person your private life your family your relationships and your career or your public life and those are all very transformative things when we have a big 1.5 year window of faded changes happening in those houses you will not leave the same person that you entered into that era as so this is something that's going to be really big for everybody fixed signs in general typically don't love change they can be very stubborn and they like to stick with not only what works but what feels very comfortable for them it can be very stressful to not have complete control or possession over situations people relationships you know whatever it may be so fixed signs in general when they get challenged or when they get put in positions where they're being asked to change especially against their own will it can be this big fight of resistance and not seeing the fact that on the other end of that change in that resistance is trans transformation that is absolutely in your best interest. So the fixed signs are kind of taking um, the baton from the cardinal sign. So if you are a Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn placement, or if you have any of those, it doesn't necessarily have to be your sun sign or your rising sign, but any of those in your personal placements, you've been kind of going through the same type of like idealization for the last year and a half. You just came out of this cycle and now the fixed signs are about to go through it. If you guys are like me and and you happen to have complete cardinal and fixed signs in your chart, you, this is going to be a long process for you because now you're in the middle of it. You've been going through it for a year and a half, but now you have another year and a half to go with the next nodal shift. So this is something that 
um, is constantly happening, but with it being in the fixed signs, if you have those placements or any signs there or your cadent houses in those signs, this is going to be very prominent for you. Um, it's going to be a really big transformative era, sometimes in a way that feels very uncomfortable and can feel like you're being tested and the world is against you and the universe is against you. But to me, at least personally, astrology is relieving in that way because a lot of the times it can feel like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why am I going through this? Nobody else around me is going through this and it's always nice to kind of have that reassurance that it's it's happening in the sky you know like it's something that is supposed to be happening and it's not you doing something wrong or going down the wrong path or you're intentionally unaligned or you know not manifesting hard enough well, all these things that we hear about what we're doing wrong it's more so that you're being pushed to go into those un uncomfortable areas of your life because they need some spring cleaning a little bit and that if you weren't pushed into those areas you would probably always avoid them so it's kind of like um the way i always describe saturn like it's like being thrown in the pool as a baby and like choking and screaming and being like oh my god i don't want to do this and then very slowly you learn how to swim and you're like why was i so afraid of that so this is going to be a lot of pivotal type of coming of age energy for these signs specifically now with the north node being in taurus taurus placements are kind of having the glow up end of this meaning that if you're a taurus rising a taurus sun or you have personal planets in taurus so like mercury venus um jupiter or anything like that you're kind of getting this you know the larger end of the stick in the sense that you're you're almost being celebrated and boosted for your Taurus placements because we know that the North Node is like faded change transformation good things blessings it's basically pushing you to your life purpose something where it's like um maybe the best word to use is encouragement so for you to kind of have that North Node in Taurus where uh, you know regardless of what placements you have everyone wherever you have Taurus in your chart is going to be lit up it's going to say look over here it's time to focus on this stuff you're going to start seeing a lot of change here even if you don't want to and there's going to be a major focus on this area of your life for the next 18 or so months because it's in your best interest so even if you don't have Taurus placements for example I'm a Scorpio rising so this is in a cadent house for me it's in my seventh house of relationships I don't have any personal I don't have any planets at all in my seventh house. It doesn't mean it's not going to affect me, but it's saying, okay, it's time for me to focus on my interpersonal relationships at this point in my life. So I'm going to include the wheel of the houses and the descriptors of each house. That way you guys have some more context of like wherever Taurus is in your chart, that's where you're being asked to focus on. And to be clear, if it's not in a cadent house, for example, if it's in, in the 11th house or if it's in um, the fifth house, it's not to say this isn't important or relevant to you. It's just that that area of your life is going to be lit up and it isn't as prominent or as strong as it would be in one of the cadent houses so again the first house the fourth house the seventh house or the tenth house so back to what i was saying those taurus placements even if you don't have any planets there and it's in a cadent house of yours or any house that it's in but especially those cadent houses like if this is your rising sign this is something where for example, if it's in your first house, you are going to have a glow up. You're going to look different in the next 1.5 years. You're probably going to have a physical glow up, but also a shift in your personality. Maybe you'll start to look at the world differently, have a different sense of self, have a different reputation. Um, if this is in your seventh house, this could look like you getting into a very serious relationship, working on all of your interpersonal relationships, even breaking up with somebody, but seeing, you know, coming to this kind of purified truth of the area of um that you know that Taurus rules for you in your chart so those Taurus placements are going to be really celebrated and really magnified to the highest ability now as for Scorpio placements you are experienced the south node energy so we know that the south node isn't inherently a bad thing but it does kind of talk about the themes of letting go in that area of our life so both when we speak about like our natal south node and our transiting south node it's saying okay we've mastered this area but we really need to start letting go of the crutches the vices the coping mechanisms that we have in this area in order to fully progress and step into a greater more 
wiser version of ourselves so it's not to say scorpio placements are the bad guy taurus placements are the good guy right now they are sister signs so they're the nodes are always going to be completely at an opposition to each other meaning that whatever sign that the north node is transiting in the south node is always going to be in the opposite sister sign and we know that sister signs while they're completely opposite they're also completely the same and they share a lot of the same similar themes so taurus and scorpio the similarities that they share have a lot to do with control and possession and needing to own things needing to feel like things belong to you taurus is an earth sign so it's very focused on practicality it's a lot more grounded so practicality reliability and the security of things whereas scorpio is a water sign so it's more focused on devotion and trust and transformation so it's not to say that one is better than the other but they share this kind of underlying undercurrent of wanting to possess things or control things with taurus it could look like more practical things like wanting to hoard a lot of money to have that security whereas with scorpio it would be wanting to have more control over the thoughts and the feelings of other people to have the emotional security that these people aren't going anywhere does that make sense so to have the south node transiting scorpio and the north node in taurus regardless of where it is in your chart it's saying instead of focusing on what feels secure so so things that we do, little habits, little coping mechanisms we have to feel safe, it's time to actually focus on real safety and real security. So for example, if you have Scorpio in your fourth house, that means you have Taurus in your 10th house. So the fourth house being home and family and having Scorpio there, and then the Taurus being in the 10th house of your career sector, your public life, your success, it can look like you being tested in the sense that maybe you live at home, maybe it feels more comfortable and safe living at home, and the thoughts and the opinions of your family for, like regarding what you do for work could be very important to you but you might start seeing faded lessons around that for the next year and a half that really encourage you and almost force you to start moving into your own place getting a house of your own starting to have to move in a more authentic career that brings you a lot more financial security but might piss your family off and you're kind of being tested to see that you have to let go of those home and family matters um, your private life what everybody else thinks and feels about you and doing what normal normally feel safe doing the easy way out the Scorpio way out rather than now being asked to focus on Taurus which is I can't really care what anybody thinks anymore I need to focus on my values on what's going to create a strong foundation for myself so that's why I'm talking about this um cadent house situation so much because if any of this regardless of if it's scorpio or taurus falls in your first fourth seventh or tenth house you are going to change the most and i'll use myself for example um i'm a scorpio rising so i have scorpio in the first house and by you know nature just because they're sister signs i'm always going to have taurus in the seventh house so if you're a scorpio rising you have the same house system as me scorpio in the first house taurus in the seventh house now that also means that aquarius and Leo are going to naturally be at an opposition in my other two cadent houses, my fourth versus my tenth. So I don't have any planets in my first house of Scorpio. And I don't have any planets in my seventh house of Taurus, but that's the ascendant versus the descendant. So that's self versus relationships. So having the south node transit my first house, as you can assume, is tough. This is an identity crisis in the same way that Scorpio or Taurus placements will be dealing with it. But because the north node is in Taurus, it's kind of like you're having that glow up where Scorpio placements are kind of dealing with really having to let go of parts of their identity that no longer serve them, aren't authentic authentic or aren't aligning in their best interest so for me for example for the next year and a half i feel like i'm already feeling it i'm seeing a lot of change and transformation in my interpersonal relationships where the north node is in my seventh house and because of that it's bringing out sides of myself that i do not like that i'm realizing are problematic that i that i realize are um coping mechanisms and habits that i have to make myself feel safe but are now creating detrimental damage to the interpersonal relationships in my life and the whole journey with the north node is that we're being asked to really lean into it rather than resist it so instead of sticking to that very stubborn type of um reactionary energy that Scorpio has we're being asked to focus on the solutions that are going to provide a long-term stable foundation with Taurus so my journey personally is going to be about 
having to let go of certain things about my personality, um, who I am, the way that I come off to other people, the way that I treat people in my relationships in order to strengthen those said relationships. And then with that, uh, those two other fixed signs, Aquarius and Leo, I have Aquarius in the fourth house of home and family. I do have um, my Uranus and my Jupiter in Aquarius in the fourth house. And then in Leo, I have Mercury and Venus in my 10th house of my career. So those two things are going to be at a natural square in opposition to each other the opposition is going to be between my fourth house and my 10th house my private life versus my public life my home life versus my career um, where I'm come from where I come from versus my legacy where I'm going who I want to be apart from where I come from and then um, that other opposition is going to be self versus relationships so having those personal placements in Aquarius and in um Leo, I'm going to see a lot of action happening between leaving home or having home affected in some way and then having my career really be lit up in the same way. And with all of those squaring each other, pretty much creating a box between each other, the four major pillars of who I am are going to change completely. I'm not going to recognize myself one, probably after the eclipses. We have the first eclipse on April 30th and then the second one um, towards the end of the year in November. So there's going to be a huge summer of... It, it actually looks astrologically like we're going to have a calm summer, but more personally, it's going to be affecting us, like just who we are, who we're with, what we're going through, etc. But after that November um, eclipse we're having there and then into next year, I'm probably going to be a completely changed person in who I am, my home and family life, my relationships, and my career. And those can all be very challenging to have all four of what what should feel like what we would ideally want to be stable in our everyday life up in the air by default for a very long time. But it's kind of like what goes up must come down. It's like throwing things in the air and they're just kind of suspended for the next year and a half. And we have no idea how they're going to fall back down onto the ground, um, you know, come mid-2023. Um, as far as the Aquarius and the Leo placements, so you guys are getting affected by this. Like for example, if you're an Aquarius sun or you have a Leo Venus or something like that, you're also kind of getting triggered here because you're having squares to the nodes, meaning that there's a conflict or a collision point or an action point or more so like this feeling of needing to strengthen a muscle when it comes to fated change and fated destiny um, affecting, we you know, whatever natal planet it's in an aspect to. So Scorpio risings, for example, are really going to have to detach from who they thought they were. Their identity is going to be more so focused on interpersonal relationships and how that really really plays a crucial key into molding who you are, is who you keep around you and how you treat them and how you allow other people to treat you as well. Um, with the Aquarius and Leo placements being squaring the nodes, those houses that those signs rule for you are also going to come into play and see a lot of faded change as well. So with those eclipses happening, um, into April and May and then again in October, November. I was explaining this to somebody else the other day. I've actually explained it to a few of you guys because I don't typically like using the word portal. Like when we hear portal with... Um, I just always like to use TikTok astrology as an example because a lot of the things on TikTok or even Twitter are very much blown out of proportion and it's interesting to see how, you know, people with a lot of followers that talk about astrology on these platforms choose like very almost insignificant dates to say like this is going to be the luckiest day of the year in the next decade, like this is the 11-11 portal, like things like that. So I don't typically like using words like that just because they come with a lot of connotation that we get to sit back and enjoy this like major moment and then nobody's surprised when every time that date comes around it's like you know a normal Tuesday and you went to work and you got dinner and you went to sleep and you're like I thought something big was supposed to happen so I don't really like using the word portal but I feel like it does stand appropriate for the eclipses because the eclipses so when we have the lunar eclipse and then the solar eclipse or the full moon to the or I'm sorry the new moon to the full moon there's always going to be that fortnight that two week period about two weeks where what come what we invite in the abundance the making room for new things that comes with the new moon is going to kind of you know leave this period the suspended period this portal to the full moon which is when we let go of what no longer serves us and that happens every month you guys have been through you've lived through a million new and full moons but the eclipses kind of illuminate things that might have been hiding in the darkness or things that we might be tucking away or avoiding or brushing under the rug and whenever we have eclipses which is usually around every summer and then again towards late fall 
it's kind of like the universe god spirit whatever you want to refer to it as pulling out the rug from beneath you and being like i know you didn't expect this but it needed to happen whether that's in your what feels like it's in your best interest or whether that's completely against you another side note too is that you because you're going to see a lot of content about this once it starts getting closer to the eclipses you're going to be bombarded with tiktok and twitter content all these things saying like this is you know the x y and z this is the best manifestation period i am not going to tell you what to do and what not to do some astrologers suggest that you manifest everything that you can given the eclipse and then some people say don't manifest anything at all i think it's an important reminder to tell you guys that you are always manifesting it's not a switch that you turn on and off and i'm not even getting into the woo woo spiritual side of manifesting but your thoughts you know lead to your reality what you believe to be true is true it is going to be your reality so if you're living in this very woe is me victim mindset oh my god my life is getting so hard don't be surprised when the eclipse makes it harder for you in response to that if you're thinking okay things might change but i'm excited for it i'm gonna lean into this even if i get uncomfortable i know it's because it's going to be a period of growth for me you're going to see some amazing things come out of it because you're having a better perspective of it so with these eclipses i am going to do separate posts of them just because it is going to be a really big astrological moment as it was last year um there's going to be a lot of supercharged energy change fate and transformation around the houses that Scorpio and Taurus rule for you and wherever you have Leo and Aquarius is also going to be affected so I just want to make it very clear that regardless of if you have planets in those signs you um you know whatever houses they fall in it will affect you period um there is some you know having planets in those houses or having those houses and cadent houses are kind of like leveraging the fact that this is probably going to be a bigger moment for you like a more star of the show moment for you than it would somebody who just has like i don't know sagittarius rising and they don't really have like a lot of planets in the fixed signs like that person might not see as much as a, a change in their life but if you have those fixed signs or those fixed planets or those signs into those important houses for you you're really going to be changing the next year and a half so as far as the actual horoscopes for the eclipse is happening and the eclipse the new moon eclipse in taurus is going to be happening on april 30th and that portal that little window is going to be from the partial solar eclipse on the 30th all the way to may 16th which is going to be the lunar eclipse in scorpio so it's kind of going to be um you know if you picture this like a storybook us opening up that portal on the 30th and then having a whole bunch of kind of karmic faded up in the air type of um you know anything from transformative to tumultuous type of energy happening all the way until um that may 16th 16th date and that's when we'll see the closing of the book or the closing of the chapter so like i said it's up to you if you want to intentionally manifest things i would just say be careful what you wish for because it can add a lot of chaos i would say that's probably the best word to use with eclipses is that it's very unpredictable um very erratic energy that has a lot of vitality to it so i'm going to go over the um way this is going to kind of astrologically affect everybody depending on your rising sign and i am going to harp a little bit more again on those fixed signs if that you have a rising sign in a fixed sign um because this is going to be something that's going to be hitting one of those pillars one of those cadent houses so for aries risings this is going to be happening in your second house of finances values insecurities investments both emotional and financial security material possessions ownership work ethic and money as well as property too i wanted to add that in there as well so having a new moon we know that new moons are about cultivating things bringing new energy in new opportunities that could be something where you start to see doors open as far as the money that you're making a new income stream starting something new that could earn you money moving into a new house signing a new lease um even changing or inviting in new personal values that you have things that you're proud of that you know it doesn't matter if other people co-sign if that's like a good choice for you a good partner for you a good decision for you it's something that's really putting the ball in your car court when it comes to what you know is important to you for Taurus Risings, this is going to be happening in your first house. This is that glow up energy I was talking about. Very exciting. So we know that the first house is typically what holds your ascendant. So this is going to be the self, identity, ego, looks, new beginnings, body, and approach to life type of house. So this, with this being such a large part of who you are in the first house, just being a cadent house to begin with, and the ascendant really harping on your identity as a whole and the way that you're perceived and the way you come off to people, who you are at your core. This is again, this new energy of an 
inviting in maybe a new personality, a new look, beautiful time to get your hair done, um, try something out, get a new wardrobe. Maybe I would hold off a little bit. Maybe this is a good time to vision board all of that just because this is very erratic energy and I'm not going to tell you to like sell everything that you own and get a new wardrobe, but this is a new image, whether that's literally or like, you know, when, when it comes to your looks or metaphorically when it comes to who you are, um, a personality shift, a new perspective, a new even philosophy on life to some degree. This is going to be a really exciting time for you to kind of have a glow up, be the main character. Very fun time for celebration. Gemini Risings, this eclipse is going to be happening in your 12th house. So the 12th house is very mysterious. It's um, very similar to the 8th house in the sense that they're both very mysterious and deep and esoteric. And the 8th house is kind of sometimes the things that we're ashamed of, the things that we hide and tuck away. And the 12th house is things that we maybe don't necessarily intentionally hide, but that others don't always see about us it's very um it's kind of like a veil over your subconscious so the 12th house is really going to be your sleep dreams secrets subconscious what's hidden information feelings you know communication things that could be um under the rug a little bit spirituality psychology limited beliefs privacy solitude loneliness karma closure and healing obviously this can be one of those darker areas of who we are but this is typically going to be the area of our chart where things come full circle where we learn a lesson where we close a chapter and yes, the new moon is about bringing in new energy, but this could be a shift in your perspective or feeling brand new because you're starting to really be able to let go of something or close the door on something that you've learned from a long time ago. I would say with eclipse energy being so intense, there might just be this really... Um, I don't want to say dark period. Dark isn't the word because there's a negative connotation with that, but like this very deep, intimate era with yourself being in solitude and being able to heal and maybe look at all the things you've been through the last year and a half and kind of cultivating the things that you've learned from there and gaining new insights or maybe a new perspective on things. And I don't want to keep repeating myself, but with the 12th house being you really getting in touch with yourself and maybe what's under the radar a little bit, you might come across something that maybe you didn't notice before, whether that's a revelation or you have an epiphany of some sort and this could be a really exciting time to get in touch with your faith and the psychology of like why you do the things that, that you do and getting more aligned with that that way you can kind of steer more intentionally in the direction that you want to be going less about doing things for other people and more about doing things for yourself cancer risings this is going to be happening in your 11th house so we're bringing in new energy new opportunities opening new doors around friends co-workers manifestation networking charity groups friends the future and astrology so we know that this house is very giving it's very friendly the axis of the fifth and the 11th house is really about the people that you surround yourself with and how you give to other people but it's also going to be about where you need to maybe get clear on who you keep around you in the sense of who's adding to your life who is you know providing value with the new moon being making room for new things things that are going to bring you a lot of abundance this is a great time to network to be posting on social media to be meeting new people going out giving things away being very charitable um also i would say that if there's any sign to be manifesting it would be you because the 11th house really is hopes and dreams aspirations wishes perfect time to vision board list things out um really get clear on what you want and this will kind of give you the boost of energy to help bring that to fruition leo risings this is going to be happening in your 10th house so this is going to be one of those things where you are getting hit by this a little bit more powerfully because this is going to be in one of your cadent houses of your career and your public image so this is going to bring new opportunities the opening of new doors um new energy entirely like opportunities for abundance around your career public image reputation success industry professionalism achievements public persona goals the father and fame so i do like to include the idea of the father ruling the 10th house just because if all of the talk of maybe your career or your job or achievements aren't seeming so relevant sometimes this can point to like new opportunities or conversations around the topic of like your father in general maybe the relationship with your father but also masculinity and being somebody who can protect and provide for yourself somebody who's very goal oriented and logical and maybe getting back on your horse in a way if you feel like you've fallen off this is someone who's going to be able to ch charge towards their goals a lot more clearer this is a perfect time to like manifest a dream job or a promotion or working a little bit harder and reaping the you know fruits of your labor and the rewards of your success um beautiful time too to work on your reputation 
like if there's something that you want to launch or that there's something that um, you want to put yourself out there, start a new business, beautiful time to do it and align with the eclipse because this can bring you a lot of a boost of, you know, good fortune and manifestation in that way. Virgo Risings, this is going to be happening in your ninth house. So travel, philosophy, wisdom, beliefs, perspective, higher education, law, religion, and ethics. So you're going to start to see new opportunities or new doors opening or just new energy alongside your mindset and your philosophy on life in general. I would say this is a perfect time to probably maybe not even intentionally, but like start to gain a new perspective, looking at the things that you've probably been experiencing for a while from a new perspective in a way that's going to be more enlightening for you and help you kind of build a stronger foundation in your faith. This is also a really good time to learn something new, going back to school, taking a course, um, even like brushing up on a skill set that maybe you already have, but re-instituting it a little bit. I would say having the ninth house here, this would be a great time to travel, especially us having like those Pisces placements in the air right now, kind of working in our favor, bringing a little bit of good luck and good fortune and a dreamy type of indulgent energy to the air. Great time to go on a trip, whether that's like a full vacation or even just going away for the weekend. I would say this is a great time to expand your horizons, both literally and metaphorically, literally when it comes to traveling, metaphorically when it comes to maybe learning something new, practicing your spirituality a little bit. Um, even just like shifting your perspective to some degree looks like something that will bring you a lot of blessings, especially with that eclipse energy being a little bit more intense. You might have like a spiritual way awakening to some degree. Libra Risings, this is going to be happening in your 8th house. The 8th house is sex, death, transformation, secrets, transactions, um, you know, shared investments or shared possessions as well, shame, self-sabotage, loans, privacy, mystery, government matters, all of the above. So the thing is, is that the 8th house is traditionally ruled by Scorpio, which is where the South Node is transiting right now. So you might be in a little bit of a tougher spot when it comes to maybe not being sure what to do or not being sure of you know the intentions of the people around you are struggling to let go of your vices or the things that you use to kind of serve as a crutch in your life but I would say with the new moon being like new opportunities new room for improvement or abundance this might be a good time to like invest in some things put your money in some spots where you really want to build a foundation and see it grow this could look like you know going half seas on a house with your partner or something like that because this is going to be the house of shared things whether that's literally when it comes to investments property um physical things shared assets or this could be metaphorically when it comes to like building your trust with somebody new feeling a lot more intimate in your relationships um it's going to bring a lot of newer more abundant energy to the things that you share with other people again whether that's literally or metaphorically but it's also going to be a very mysterious time you might feel like you have like a literal internal death and rebirth process of your own where you're shedding a lot of old pain or trauma or just closing up a lot of cycles and the new type of energy is going to be the room that you're clearing up now to make room for the new things that are coming so this is going to be a very exciting deep time for you you might not see too much change in like your actual physical environment but more so internally which is just as exciting. Scorpio Risings, this is going to be happening in your seventh house of relationships, marriage, justice, business partners, contracts, and equality. So we know that the seventh house is things that are very peaceful and fair and balanced, but it's also usually going to point to our romantic interests, commitments, and relationships. So the new moon being opening new doors, bringing abundance, um, kind of allowing more space for you to grow and to invite new energy in. This could look like meeting somebody new. I would say sometimes that can point more so towards the fifth house being romance. The seventh house I would say isn't so much the honeymoon phase but rather the having a serious conversation and taking the next step into a relationship phase like this would be instead of the first date it would be the engagement um, this can bring a lot to to the table when it comes to business partners collaborations partnering with different companies going in on like a deal with somebody the seventh house too I think often gets written off as just a romantic house but this is typically just going to be the area where you see collaboration with somebody where you have a shared goal in mind and you're both working towards the same thing so working with other people in general whether that's business partners romantically or even just your interpersonal relationships you'll start to see newer energy here that maybe encourages you to commit a little bit more to strengthen your values in this place um you know again whether that's this new energy of like stepping into a new phase of your relationship or maybe if you've been struggling for a while sitting down and having a conversation and saying listen this might be tough but we're committed to each other and i'm committed to you know building trust and fixing the issue in this relationship and taurus being building that foundation this is going to be a very 
exciting it might be challenging but reassuring time to really you know get serious about who's in your life what you share with them and strengthening the relationships between you and the other person Sagittarius risings this is going to be happening in your sixth house of work co-workers habits health diet pets acts of service fitness and jobs so the sixth house is really how you treat other people in terms of what you do it's the service of that but it's also the act of labor that you do for work and the labor of taking care of yourself every single day so this house is a little bit more mundane but it's really going to be your daily routine what you put in your body how you treat yourself so it's really important i would say when you have the new moon here being like new opportunities new chapters bringing new abundance here you this could be a perfect time to like start working out or really get into a routine if you had any new year's resolutions that maybe were a little bit tougher to start at the kickoff of like the actual you know calendar year like january this is a good time to do it especially with aries season being the calendar during New Year astrologically, it's kind of giving you that second chance to take yourself seriously, to set routines that are going to set you up for success. Um, this could be anything from like getting a new pet to helping other people out, like trying to do the labor of helping other people, maybe putting in a little bit more effort at work, working extra hours, things like that. But it's really going to be about creating healthy habits for yourself and taking care of yourself today. That way your future self can thank you later. Capricorn Risings, this is going to be happening in your fifth house of sex, romance, fertility, attention, drama entertainment dates children pregnancy creativity joy indulgence talent and fame so the fifth house is arguably one of the most exciting houses in the entire you know house system because this is going to be the house of what feels good what brings your inner child to life what is very exciting to you what feels very indulgent to you and as a capricorn rising in general you're typically someone who's very determined very hard working that earth energy is very grounded and it's kind of focused on the practicality of success but this is going to actually invite you to do things that just feel good not necessarily are productive for you know making you more money or being more successful but just towards your happiness in general this is going to bring new opportunities new abundance more room to clear way for things that are going to feel very good to you whether that's meeting somebody new going to restaurants more going out to concerts it makes me think of you know the the idea of like getting back out there whether that's after you got out of a relationship or just because of you know the lockdown and the virus it's kind of like this exciting energy of i'm gonna put myself back out there i'm gonna be the old me i'm gonna enjoy myself again so this is a great time to start any new hobbies to get very creative to get in touch with your inner child um even something a little bit more serious conceiving children or deepening your you know romantic relationships as well it's a very indulgent time to enjoy what feels good what makes you happy and what just makes you you know what lights you up inside rather than something that has to be so detrimental or so crucial for your success this is going to be about lighting you up inside Aquarius risings this is happening in your fourth house of home family property private life emotions root um, home femininity your private life comfort zone moving and nostalgia so we know that the fourth house yes is home and family and mother and all of those feminine aspects but it's also who you are at the core where you come from your roots and all of this playing into this eclipse energy again this being one of the cadent houses it's going to be very prominent in like your identity and who you are so having a new moon here an eclipse here could be anything from you know getting a new house maybe signing a lease taking property a little bit more seriously but this could also look like literally closing like generational trauma or things that come before you things that are rooted in you know the generations before you or family ties etc so yes the new moon is typically like bringing in new energy like new abundance new opportunities things like that but sometimes we can't have access to new things until we get rid of the old things and this could be a good time to really clear out any trauma or anything from where you come from in order to make you know new room to make this new story of who you are and where you want to really be able to put your stuff down and feel like you are at home it's redefining the idea of home in a way um this could also be just a very nostalgic time you might be getting in touch with your emotions to some degree starting to feel them out in a little bit more like having a new perspective around them but very exciting time to maybe clear up the home renovate the home move sign a new lease um maybe even get in touch with family and starting maybe there's like a new chapter here to start with family members if you have tougher relationships this could be a really good time to kind of get in touch with that the root of that and like start something start open up a conversation so that you can start a newer phase of the relationship or a new era around what home and family means to you Pisces risings this is happening in your third house of communication thoughts speaking talking writing siblings best friends cars environment everyday things and people education
location. So the third house is a little bit more mundane, but it is the things that are very local to you. And it's pretty much what takes up your entire daily life, whether that's where you go to get coffee every day, who you're surrounded by every day, what you watch and post on social media every day. It's going to bring a lot of attention to the things that are very detrimental to your everyday life. Having this new moon energy being new opportunities, new abundance, creating new, you know, making room for new things to come in through this area of your house system. I would say this could look like having new conversations with people that maybe you used to speak to, opening up the door into like inviting people over, um, even like switching up the way that you, the, like the content that you consume, because this is going to be, you know, the conversations that we have every single day. It's the things that we read online. It's the books that we read, the things that we listen to on the radio, etc. So to have this new energy here, this could look like simply just like getting into a new book genre or like listening to a new artist, hanging out with somebody that maybe you want to strengthen your relationship with, whether that's somebody that's like a co-worker or, you know, etc. This could also just be learning something new with the third house typically also pointing to education to some degree. So this could be a really good time to just kind of fix or hone in new energy around like the car that you drive, um, the routine that you have, the way that you speak to people, the way that you communicate, working on those skills and seeing that the tiny details do matter in the bigger picture and that by having these new opportunities in this new room around those themes, you'll be able to make these little tweaks that really affect your life as a whole. I talk a lot more about this on Patreon. The link is going to be in the bio in case you want to subscribe and you haven't subscribed already. Um, I'm really excited for this eclipse personally. It's in my house of relationships and I'm honestly a little bit nervous to see how this is going to play out for me, but I think it's going to be a very exciting time for everybody. And like I said, who you are today is going to be very different from who you are later into the fall. And I think it's going to be probably a challenging ride, but overall very exciting to see, you know, what journey everybody's going to take and how this is going to play out for everybody. Because like I said, this is typically pretty unpredictable and we more often than not are like, how did I get here once that second eclipse hit? So I'm excited for this. If you guys have any questions, please comment them. I'm more than happy to answer them. You can book a reading if you want to get really down and dirty about how this is going to affect you specifically on my website. That's also going to be linked as well. Thank you for listening. Let me know if there's anything that you guys would like me to post on here more regularly. I'm trying to get my YouTube more active again. But other than that, love you guys. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notifications. And thank you guys for trusting me.